We'd like to thank Montecito Bank and Trust for their generous support in making Scam Squad possible. I'm Patty Teal. And I'm Deputy District Attorney Vicki Johnson. Scam Squad is up next. Sound off. One, two. Sound off. Three, four. One, two, three, four. Scam Squad. I'm your host, Patty Teal, here as always with Deputy District Attorney Vicki Johnson. And Vicki, we have a guest today. You want to introduce her? Absolutely. I am so uh, pleased to have with us today Valerie. Valerie, I met uh, on the telephone. She called the fraud hotline, thankfully, to tell me about uh, an experience that she had where she almost got scammed. And uh, I wanted her to come on the show because Valerie has a particular background, which makes her very savvy about internet scams. And so I wanted her to share her experience because my feeling is if she could have gotten scammed, it could happen to anybody. So Valerie, thank you so much for coming on the show today. And could we start off by you telling us just a little bit about your background? I think you were an organizational consultant or still are. I'm still working as an organizational consultant, usually with IT departments, which makes this significant. And these information technology nice. departments are interested in customer service and, and how to work as a team. So that's what I do. And you work with some of the big companies, is that right? Um, some of the major companies uh, in, the, in the country, uh, giving them assistance in that, in that regard. So... Tell me how this all started. I think you said it started when you were using your um, computer and your screen froze. Is okay. that right? That's correct. I woke up at, I get up very early. I'm at six in the morning and I open my laptop and it says, you have been hacked. Do not touch your screen. Call this number immediately. And the number at the bottom of the screen was not a Microsoft number. I kind of sort of figured out that wasn't going to be the Microsoft number because I've heard about these locking up your screen. So I immediately went to look up Microsoft's phone number and email. And so I looked it up and there it was. And I clicked on it just the way I would normally do as an IT person <laughs> because I do specialize in these kinds of threats too and risk factors. And so I went to that number and I got a gentleman called Jack Flynn, and I, now it's a pun, like in like Flynn, right? And he gave me right. his badge number. He sounded like Microsoft. He said, this is Microsoft. This is Jack Flynn. Uh, we're going to help you get out of this uh, hack. When I told him my screen is frozen, I think I've been hacked. And he said, well, we'll fix that. Just stay calm. Don't do anything. Just follow what I tell you to do. And that sounded reasonable. And every instruction he gave me is what I teach. That was what was so frustrating. Wow, yeah. amazing. So I, I mean, he just question. said all the things that, that people are told to yeah. say as a customer yeah. service contact for this kind of uh, scam. Go ahead. So Valerie, you didn't call the number that came up on your screen. You independently went and looked up their number and got the scammer? Yes, because they had blocked any link to Microsoft Oh. with with uh, the scam, but also they also, I might have called the wrong number. I mean, I might've called a number that they compromised, sure. meaning they put a number and I, I answered that email too fast. I mean, I looked for their email too fast. Uh, right. I think that's what, and now I think that's what happened and I just called that number right away. And um, it was a setup, it was a total setup. And then the supervisor comes on and he shows me my screen after pushing the Microsoft button on my laptop. And there it is, the 12 calls outside. He said, we're gonna look at who's on your phone and what, what they come from. They're all out of country. He had this matrix with a black, black background with white text. So it looked just like an in, internal screen. And then they had 36 mobile uh, possibilities of attack all out of the country and several that were repeated numbers. So that's what I see when I see a scam with other people, you know, when I'm working with a client, that's what they show me. Sure. So they actually know the protocol at Microsoft and they know all the details. Then it got a little dicey because I started getting suspicious when he said, we have to call directly to the fraud line at Wells Fargo Bank, your account. We need to call them 
and let them know that this has happened and help set up the fix. So the minute he said that, that he had to call the fraud line and I had to give them the number, which I did, uh, I knew that, wait a minute, why am I not calling the fraud line? Why is he calling the fraud line? And then someone with a Russian accent came on the phone, whereas this Jack Flynn had a slight Indian accent. And then uh, I talked to the Wells Fargo person who told me that I, need, I had a $4,000 attempt out of my account and that they knew my account. And they said, and you also have a subscription pending for kitty porn. Wow. So then I immediately looked at my account and sure enough, there was a pending thing for kitty porn. Oh <laughs> so right gosh. now I'm like hooked. I'm hooked terribly. But anyway, that turned out to be the not even the worst. Then he says to me, well, we need you need to give us $4,000 and then the hackers will come get it and then we'll trace them. That's how we fix it. And I said, I do not believe this is legit now. I'm not going to go out and buy $4,000 worth of gift cards, which he said, you can just charge it to your accounts because your, your credit cards are not touched. So he also asked me just before that, do you have credit cards starting with three, four, five, or six? And I said, I have all those numbers. I'm a business. I have all those cards. And uh, over the years, you know, if people have all those cards, but he did not ask me for any money yet until, until... Uh, he said, we can resolve this, but you're going to have to, the Microsoft person comes on and says, you can, we're going to resolve it, but you have to, con you have to negotiate with them. He's on the line with me, with the fraud guy. Isn't that amazing? Okay. Yeah. So then he says, go buy the gift cards. And I say, okay, this is a scam and I'm hanging up right now. And then I immediately got up and went to Wells Fargo Bank. I live in, in a place that where the bank is like five minutes away. So I immediately went to the bank. And sure enough, there was a pending charge for kitty porn, and there was no charge for $4,000 coming in, no, no attempt. Now, the worst thing was the man who was threatening me said, if you don't pay us, we're going to call the FBI and say that you have kitty porn oh on your gosh. account. Oh, my so gosh. So once that happens, by the way, because I also work with the government, and it was it I worked in actually the Pentagon. And so I knew about IT there too. And I knew that once you tell some, the FBI that there's possible kitty porn, that triggers a whole investigation of mm. your bank and everything. And they can freeze your accounts and while they're investigating, could take months, could cost you money. So I was horrified. But fortunately, the bank was able to stop the whole process. I was able to go then to Staples and get that thing off my laptop. One more thing though, when I went to Staples, I got a call from the FBI while I'm in Staples on my cell phone. And they said, we understand that you are looking at kitty porn. And I said, you can talk to my lawyers. I'm hanging up right now. Okay, so I didn't even give them a name of a lawyer. Then I go to Staples. They, they have restored my screen with all my folders, but all of my, all of my data is gone. It's gone off the laptop. <sighs> Oh and it gosh. had to be replaced. And I, the good news was I had a laptop that I had not recycled that was current up till June. So I was able to take everything off that laptop, but I lost everything that I had done in the last four months. Mm. Gone. It's just gone because so they were Valerie, deleting it. Yeah. Valerie, it sounds to me, I mean, this was a multi-level scam. Uh, it looks like there were five different people that got involved with you. And I... Understanding that's correct. Correctly. That's so the, correct. The first person was this Jack Flynn, right? And he sounded like the real deal, and he gave you a badge number, and I think he even gave you a case number. Is that right? That's correct. And then he passed you off to the supervisor. That's and correct. That person did some things with you, and and the supervisor did he have a different accent than uh, Jack Flynn? Yes, he had a regular accent. You had a re and Jack Flynn had some kind of an accent. And then you got sent to the fraud, what you thought was the fraud department at your bank? At, yes. And it wasn't. It was a guy that had a Russian accent who was part of the, uh, the scam group. Yeah. And then he <laughs> was the one that said, we need, to, we need to trap the hacker, go get some gift cards. 
And that's where you said, no, this is a scam. But this is what I think is so interesting. These fraudsters, it sounds like, did not give up. While you were at Staples getting your computer fixed, you got another phone call from somebody telling you that it was the FBI. And I believe that was probably another scammer trying to hook you back in somehow. I'm sure of it. It had a Washington number. It did have a Washington, D.C. because I worked there. Which but it was proof. not appropriate. There's no way that was an FBI agent because he yeah. did not he did not present himself the way the FBI would. But the other thing about it is that how terrifying for an older person who believes that they're going to be reported to the FBI. Uh, older people yeah. are very vulnerable. They obey the laws. They obey. They do what people tell them yeah. without question. And unfortunately, at six in the morning, I was doing the same thing because <laughs> I was going to work on a project and I was very motivated to get off this hack. And yeah. oh, one more thing I'd like to share is that when they fixed my laptop, I asked them to take off a little square that said hacker on it. You've been hacked. It was the actual screen that said you've been hacked. And the minute they attempted to do that, these were professionals at Staples. The minute they did that, all of my files disappeared. That's oh when I lost them. Oh so my So you couldn't even get it fixed if you didn't have a backup, a hard drive, or a com another computer with everything on it. And that's not what most people have. They don't keep their old computers. No. 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 So they but really anyway. had a level of IT sophistication that is kind of stunning to me, the way they were able to make it look like they had all this data and the black and white inner workings of the computer. I mean, that would- Code be numbers, all the code numbers that oh he counts. Gosh. It's like a unbelievable, unbelievable. And, and I, I really think I've been traumatized ever since. I mean, sure. I'm afraid to open mail. I'm afraid yeah. to, I do scam things. So I send it off to scam. Uh, but the same people are contacting me in the scam, you know, and I've talked to my browser uh, person and they say, well, it's all going into scam. Just delete it all. And I do every day, but I'm still getting 100 to 200 scam attempts a wow. day. That's unbelievable. That's yeah. unbelievable. But I have a business and it's been happening that way for several yeah. weeks. I don't open things that are phishing. I only open now what I recognize. And that's pretty difficult if you're a business because you don't know what who's you're coming in. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, they've gone to a new level of sophistication, looking at how they can tap into phone lines. So you think that number, even if it's correct, is going somewhere, but it's going to the hackers. And they all, that was five of those people in a kind of collusion, you know, just handing off to each other. And it's very embarrassing because you think you know better and then you get set up like that. Fortunately, I didn't lose any money and I was able to close down all that account stuff that they were trying to get into, but I'm still nervous. I have to monitor now my credit cards and everything every every week, of just course. check and make sure. Yeah and, yeah, and and that's very high pressure. That just wastes a lot of time every day. Right. You know, you have to double check. Absolutely. Well, looking back, um, what what were the red flags, if any? I mean, up to the time where they said gift cards. We, we all know that gift cards, that's the big red flag. As soon, as soon as somebody asks you to go get gift cards, you know you're dealing with a scammer. Well, was another there anything up to that point that could have given you pause? Look, just looking back. No, not really. I, I have to admit that I really was hooked up to the point of the fraud line, because calling the bank, why can't I call the bank? Right. Why do they you have to do that. it? And here's what they said. They said, and it made sense to me, that they have a special person at the bank that they connect with who specializes in this kind of fraud. And I knew that was true because I had a fraudulent credit card sure. that was stopped. We had that yeah. card stopped. And I'm wondering if these people are the ones who were involved in that because we had to get a whole new card. And that's happened three times this year. Wow, three yeah, times. Yeah, so I'm a prime target for some reason. Mm -hmm. And I just keep fighting them off. You know, I just, I'm not going to take the bait anymore at all. But I think I'm pretty good now. I, I think that the other red flag was when they said to me, you have to negotiate. The Microsoft guys said, you better negotiate because they're not going to let you go until you pay them. Mm. And I said, I'm not negotiating. And that's when, of course, we went to the bank. Right. Almost like reminds me, I don't negotiate with terrorists, you know, and that's know. really what they well, are. I was probably thinking that. I'll tell yeah, you, Patty, you, I was Valerie. probably thinking that at the time. Yeah. yeah. At the time, yeah. I'm talking, uh-uh. 
That word does. Uh-huh. I teach negotiation, and there's right. not going to be no negotiation. Good for you. <laughs> but you know, when you're when you're describing this, I'm thinking to myself, if that had happened to me, and a, a guy that I thought was was with um, whoever the company was that they said you were was talking to you, if they said, "Listen, we're going to call your bank because we have a direct line to the person there that could help us," I would probably say, "Oh, good." Because I know if I call, I'll be put on hold forever and I'll never get through and I'll have to wait for three hours and to talk to somebody. And I would have been absolutely sucked in by that. I was well, exactly. Not, it makes sense that, uh, you know, IBM or whoever they pretended to be has a direct line to the people at the bank, has a direct line to their fraud department because this is what they do. And thank God they have that direct line. I mean, truly, I would have been completely sucked in by that. Well, and- it, uh, it's, it's interesting because I tell people to help whoever's being scammed help them get to where they need to go to fix it. So it's almost as if they've read my notices on how to prevent a scam and how to deal with it. If you're an old person, I specialize in helping old people just as a volunteer activity on my own website that educates people about this. And so we do scam of the month and there's all the gift scams now where you've just won a gift. You know, you've won, I've won three tractors i've won a tv set i've won a computer <laughs> i want a lot need all the john deere if anybody wants a john deere i think i should sell it probably and just refer them back but yeah. these people are relentless in telling me i've won all this stuff on iphone 14 i've won this just for taking a survey and it is a survey company that uh i did report i think to you or somebody that these are the that i'm getting one called renter and one called a survey company that has a numeric uh, attempt to get into my my uh, to get my attention. Let me just say that. And so there, it, it's unbelievable how perfect this was. Although I should have known better. What I tell people is, the minute you see the hacker screen that's locked, shut your computer off, unplug okay. it, and take it to a professional, okay. and make sure the professional is the one who opens it. And I teach that. I mean, I can't believe I did it, but I I can believe it because I thought I knew it. You know, you get you get arrogant about your own abilities. You get arrogant. You say, well, I can fix this. I'm going to do it on my own. I don't, as like you said, my greatest fear in life today is being kept on hold. Yeah. I have a million things to do. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And so that's I don't want anybody kind of holding that me. sucks you right in, you know, oh, we can get through right away. Great. Let's do it. I got to get this fixed. And I had a project that I was working on. Remember, it's six in the morning. I'm working. So it was very enticing and they got me. They just got me. Yeah. Well, I, I think your advice is good, and I think this is kind of the ultimate advice, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, or, or uh, enlighten me if you have other things to share with us, but it sounds like what you have said is absolutely the right thing to do. If your screen freezes and if it goes black, unplug. Is that the advice you give ultimately? Yes, but remember, they're going to have this screen that looks like Microsoft. It has a number at the bottom. It says, you have been hacked. Please don't do anything but call this number. So I kind of took the bait. And it looked like the Microsoft screen. Okay. Until the end when they did this yellow, ugly thing that looked like a a pirate. And I knew it was out of the country because that's kind of the stuff they do with these graphics. And there was no misspellings. There was nothing I was looking for. You know, a lot of times hackers will misspell things. That's a dead giveaway. Absolutely. But they didn't. It was a perfectly demonstrated screen. And that's happened to me with the the bank lately, with Google. You have to be so careful now because they copy the logos and they copy the face sheet that you see on the the laptop. Yeah. So you have to really listen carefully. Does this sound ridiculous or call them back? That's another thing that I tell people is find the right number and call call them back. Yeah. And not the fraud line because they can block those. You know, they can intercede. They they connect in with those, hack in. Oh, wow. Hmm. Yeah, pretty scary, well, huh? I, it is. It's very, very scary. I mean, that's unfortunately the world we're living in right now. But I really want to thank you so much for coming on our show and sharing this. Because the message is, if you can get fooled, any of us can get fooled. 
So we have to be really careful what we do out there and we just have to question it. Unfortunately, they are out to get us and they are finding more and more sophisticated ways to, uh, to get at us and uh, to scam us. So and can I just bring up one more thing? Absolutely. Uh, I got a call two days ago about a woman who was called, an older woman, a member I specialized in that group now as a volunteer. Um, she said they were going to deliver food to her house that some friends of hers had pulled money together to buy her food because they knew she was hungry. And she would only have to pay the delivery charges because gas was so expensive. And she almost bought into that. And they were going to deliver spoiled food with old dated stuff because she could tell that when they came, she slammed the door. Wow. I mean, that's, that's really terrible. That's really taking that's, advantage of a vulnerable person. That is horrible. Yeah. Right. It's and fortunately, she slammed the door. Good. It's horrible and it's scary. They're now coming to our house. Right. And I know some of these uh, scammers are now, even if they are in some place like Africa or India or Canada, mm -hmm. I know that they are actually sending couriers to a person's house to pick up the monies, for example, right. in a grandparent scam, something like yeah. that. So the fact that they're sending people money mules to our homes to pick up the money, that's that's going even a step further than having you go out and buy gift cards. So I know. I yeah, know. it's very a sad world out there. But um, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. I really appreciate you coming on. Yeah, thank you, Valerie. And you're so knowledgeable yourself. Uh, keep us apprised of those scams, the new ones that come around. We'd like to hear about them. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you for you being so interested because we have to get the word out. We have to stop. Absolutely. This. Absolutely. That's why you can only stop it from the first conversation. Yeah. That's Absolutely. Right. Well, thank you for helping us get the word okay. out. Okay. Have thank a great you, day. That was so interesting. Take care. Okay, she did a great job. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I just thought she was perfect. Yeah, she was wonderful. And could you give your fraud hotline so people could call you or tell their story on the show if they would like to? Absolutely. It's area code 805-568-2442. And again, 805-568-2442. Okay, I look forward to talking next week, Vicki. Take care. Thanks, Patty. Okay, bye-bye.